body right, which was basically to half of the summer. And then the goal was just getting back in basketball shape and had a good chance playing with the national team. So the five on five in that situation definitely helps just having like a progressive return to play instead of just having the whole summer rehab and then working one on one with the coach and then coming in and, and getting basketball for the first time coming here. So basically had half the summer to get the body right and then the other half to actually get ready to play basketball. How does your game kind of fit with what his expectations are for you and for the team both on both sides of the floor? Uh, both sides, he's asking a team basketball, which which always fits well with me. Uh, I enjoy that he's he's asking the ball movement and offense and uh, and that type of a play. I don't really think I need any place set up for me at any time. Uh, I'll, I can find the open spots, just read off the other players and uh, kind of get open that way and just keep the spacing right so it's easier for everybody else. And defensively, you know, when there's a system, I think if, if everybody's following the, the rules that are set in the system, we all, all look better on defense. One more for you about last year. You mentioned at media day that you have had to kind of deal with the cap entry going into the offseason. It seemed like last year you just had a lot of like little things you had to go through. Um, what, what, uh, how bad was the cap entry? Like, like now that that season's over, like how, how oh. bad were the injuries? Uh, great too is is pretty serious and something that you can't take lightly and uh, and especially returning to play you know it was still under question mark until the last week before playing with the national team whether I'm going to play or not uh, you know because if you if you re injured that again after a grade two you're probably out for months and uh, and then it's even harder to come back and it's the same deal when you come back you got to be super careful so so it's no joke with the with the muscle injuries so we took it as careful as possible. And you guys have uh, your first preseason game coming up, and that should be your new uh, first game with the new ball, right? The NBA change the ball. Yeah. What has that process been like for you as a shooter, kind of adjusting to uh, to the slightly different ball? Well, since uh, during the summer in the national team, we have to play with the, with the molten, which they changed that thing like two three years back. It wasn't great before, you know. A lot of NBA players when they go with the national teams, they com they complain about those basketballs. I'm going to tell you this, they're 10 times as worse as it was five years ago. So, uh, you know, when I <laughs> after the Molden, when I took the Wilson ball, I thought finally I get to touch a real basketball. So, so I don't know how it would be if, if I was switching straight from Spalding to, to, Mo, to Wilson right away. But having that Molden in the middle was, was definitely a, a bonus for, for Wilson. <laughs> Uh, I think everybody's come here and you can see that everybody's trying to prove that, you know, we can we can achieve some together. Uh, we all understand that it's not going to be an individual thing that somebody's going to go take care of the basketball and, and win the games by themselves. Of course, there's going to be some nights for Brad Kuz or or Spencer, of course, there's no doubt, but but overall, to win enough games to make the playoffs and have us in a good position for the playoffs, we have to play as a team. And, uh, and you know, this is the time where we're trying to build that together. So we'll see, you know, in practice, some things look good, some things look bad. But when you actually get to the games, that's when you can really experience how it is playing against another team that doesn't really know 100% what you're going to do. What does that feel like out there? Like, how does that, how, how can you tell that this team is full of guys who are trying to prove something or trying to prove themselves? First of all, it, mo most guys were here first day of open gym. Uh, like, that that feeling is, you know, usually on, on some of the teams. I think, you know, the young guys come in early, maybe some, some that are trying to fight for a spot on the team or, or getting some more minutes on the court. But now having most of the time 95% of the guys in, from from day one of open gym is like having an extended training camp and uh, getting to know each other, getting to know what everybody likes to do on the court, getting feel for each other. So I think that's that's always a positive. Are you the oldest one on the team now? Uh, we looked at it. I'm the third oldest, but not by much because uh, I think Anthony and uh, and Howell they're just a month or something ahead of me. Well, I got to say, I, I feel like an old soul overall. So I always felt older than I am probably, but uh, 
you know, as much time as, uh, as I take to get ready for one practice and as much time as I need after practice to kind of get ready for the next day, uh, you know, I feel like I'm up there in the age, but since I played professional basketball for almost half of my life. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely feeling up there and I know I feel like I can uh, speak up about some things on the team and uh, trying to help out the younger guys, you know, the, the basketball systems mostly are similar in all the teams. And uh, since I've been in plenty of places around the world, uh, I think I can help others kind of adjusting and understanding the system. Obviously, you mentioned the uh, emphasis on ball movement with this coaching staff. Have you noticed there have been more ball movement practices or drills as well in the five days of camp? Uh, I wouldn't say drills or anything. You know, you put in drills like that, that that's not going to do much for ball movement. Uh, it's just... Uh, guys understanding that we all look better when when we share the ball we're getting good looks on offense you know and uh, at the end of the day ball moment leads to easy looks more wins so if we win games we all look better so so at the end of the day if if you don't understand that team basketball is the way to win games then it's it's hard to be part of it okay davis we'll go to zoom for a couple questions neil Hey, Davis, um, you know, a lot of NBA teams, you know, they have similar plays. They just, you know, have different terminology for it. How would you say uh, the team is right now and just getting used to Coach Unsell's terminology? Is it, you know, more or less, you know, pretty much known? Or are you guys still working through the kinks and just getting comfortable with it? Uh, I think pretty much everything uh, is very simple, uh, you know, with, with all the calls and uh, what we're doing on defense and offense. Uh, it's very basic. As you know, coach said that this is the like the basic rules that we're doing. But once once it comes to games and game plan, then things might change. But you know, unless we have a specific uh, player on the other team that, for example, you know, there's a whole bunch of shooters that don't put the ball on the floor, or some guys that don't shoot and they only go to the basket. Uh, that's where the adjustments happen in each game. But overall, it, it's pretty simple and uh, and easy to understand. And you know, we have. Guys coming in here early, staying after the practice, the same with the coaches. So, you know, their doors are always open. Everybody can ask questions. And, you know, with these preseason games coming up, what would you guys, what would you say is, you know, the team's top one or two focuses to try and, you know, iron out before the regular season starts? Uh, I think it's on the defensive end. It's uh, firstly communication. I think we were lacking that last year and uh, coach coming in, you know, like from the opposite side of it, it was basically just the biggest emphasis on talking. Uh, you know, we didn't have, I think, enough guys talking on defense. And uh, that's one of the things. And, you know, when you talk, then it makes it easier for everybody to understand what we're doing. And that's with effort and communication, I think you can achieve a lot on defensive end. Thanks, Davis. We'll go back to Chris Miller in the room for the last question. Tommy said that you guys kind of just ran out of talent when the playoffs started, obviously with injuries and just Philly was just, you know, the better team. I was, do you think just in these first couple of days of camp, the talent level has leveled up? And what does it look like in scrimmages now compared to maybe a year ago? Um, yeah, I think I would say the, if you look at, you know, sometimes the units change, the first unit, second unit, like some guys getting switched teams and uh, – but mostly, if you look, that we have two pretty, you know, ones, of course, a better five than the other one in the way you look at it. Uh, but I think they're more equally spread out. Uh, we have role players. I think we have more shooters than we had last year. And, you know, having more shooters out there opens up a lot of space for, uh, for guys like Brad, Kuz, Spencer, just to kind of work their magic when they get the ball. And Gafford, that helps a lot. They both play great on the ball defense, post-up defense. They block tons of shots. So I think having a good diversity of guys out there really helps us. So good follow up to talk about that. You play with Miles, who was a really good shot blocker. Mm -hmm. How important is that aspect both from the defense to guys in front of It's very important. Um, it, it allows me to pressure up a little bit more, play a little harder on the ball, to where if I could just make him change the shot one time, uh, they'll be there to block the shot. So for guys like us playing up on top of the ball, um, it's very important. I have to ask about your shirt. Uh, to the holiday. Yeah. Uh, what, is, what does it say? Uh, holiday season. Is that uh, 
It's my brother's shirt. Uh, it's his brand. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he we got it. I think he put it out a couple of Christmas, maybe last Christmas. And he has just something we rock. <laughs> Um, I asked Thomas Bertans about uh, the NBA changing the, the basket, the brand of basketball. This mm -hmm. year. He kind of gave a pretty detailed assessment of what would be different. Uh, um, is it a different feel for you? And was there anything that you did this offseason to get accustomed to it? Yeah, it's for sure a different feel. Um, just playing a lot of basketball, a lot of pickup um, and working out helps you kind of adjust to, to the way the ball feels. Um, but just breaking it in helps a lot too. So it's a little different feel for me, but. At the end of the day, it's basketball, and that's what we pay to do, so we'll figure it out. Uh, right, one quick follow-up. Um, just the fact that you're going to play in an organized game with it for the first time, what does that mean? Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, we've been, obviously, be, we've been up here for a while, so at least a month now just working out. Uh, different guys been here for a month as well, so we're just ready to get out there and play. Um, Aaron, I wanted to ask you, KCP last week mentioned that you guys had a player at the meeting, and I feel like that like shoots off alarm bells on a lot of people's minds. <laughs> but obviously, it's not like you're coming off a losing streak or anything exactly. like that. Like it doesn't have to be a crazy thing. I'm just wondering what was kind of like the tenor of that meeting. Why did you guys feel like you wanted to come together so early and do that? Can you just kind of like explain a little bit? Honestly, just to come together and get comfortable with everybody. Um, again, we're we have a lot of new guys off trade, even just sign a free agency and new coaching staff. So just to get everybody on the same schedule and, and comfortable with each other. What do you feel like you've been focusing on? I know it's there's so much new stuff being thrown at you this mm -hmm. couple of weeks, but do you feel like you've gotten anything under control where you're like, okay, I, I, can, I know I can do this. I'm excited to mm -hmm. this game and have to be money more. For sure. I mean, I feel like I can do multiple things. Um, at first, I want to run the team, um, whether I start or come off the bench, which I love coming off the bench. There's no big deal with that. Uh, I just want to be able to run the team and get my guys the ball when they need it. Uh, that's one thing I'm focusing more on, I guess, being more of a point guard, facilitating the ball. Um, a lot of people have described you as the team pest, as like the annoying guy <laughs> who really don't like going up against. Um, do you, is there pride in that? Like, why do you feel like of all the defensive guys you have mm -hmm. on the team, like you get that moniker? Uh, probably just because I play hard. Um, I'm not really afraid of anybody. So no matter who's out there, who I'm playing against, I'm going to play hard and play the same way. So that, that could be it. Are you a big talker? Um, sometimes. I'm not a big talker off the court, but on the court, I got to get better at that. And yeah, sometimes I am. Oh, no, I meant trash talk. Uh, no, I usually don't talk trash that much, honestly. What, what gets you into a situation where you're like, is it when a guy spits at you? Like, pretty much. Yeah, I'll talk back. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> on media, they talked about growing up in a very competitive environment with your brothers mm -hmm. and your family. Uh, do you feel like that toughened you up physically as well as mentally? Uh, for sure. I mean, playing against my sister and two older brothers, I'm being the little one out there. I got to get tougher and just try to go go hard every time I can. So it for sure got me tough mentally and physically. And you talked about that to help sort of shape who you, you guys are right now. So for do sure. you feel like that really, that mental strength is something that you've been able to carry? Yeah, it, playing in NBA isn't easy. Uh, I know a lot of people, fans, whatever, think it's easy because we practice every day, but it's not. So having a strong mental health is you need that playing in like a sport like this, NFL, soccer, whatever your profession is. So it's it works well. So growing up in that in that household and just having that mentality just to be tough no matter what and get through it, uh, it helps me today for sure. Just kind of um, in relation to that, I feel like for me, like just coming back to work in person, it was a mm -hmm. crazy adjustment last week, just getting used to everything. For sure. Do you feel like with the condensed season last year, coming off of the bubble, coming off of everything, do you feel like in general, guys, and I don't know if you felt any of this, or mm -hmm. are like good for this season, or do you feel like we're going to still see some players kind of dealing with the lagging effects of like, yeah, I'm still getting back into the rhythm, back into like all the crazy stuff that happened? I mean, I think it should be a little bit of both. Uh, last year was crazy. Uh, all the games, we made a, like a day off in between that it was a very, like, we just tried to hurry up. It felt like out there on um, the season, just get through it and have these games, which it worked. We got through the season, but from the bubble to that, it was, it is hard on our bodies. And obviously we're human too. Our bodies break down just like everybody else. But I think it's going to be a little bit of both. Uh, I think we'll have some pains, bumps and bruises from then, but there are going to be guys who are ready to play right now.
All right, Aaron, let's go to Zoom for some questions. Let's start with Neil. Hey, Aaron. Um, Coach was telling us that, you know, you were playing alongside either Howell or, you know, Spencer at times in some of these runs. What's your comfort level with playing on versus off the ball? And how is that, you know, comfort maybe growing, you know, as you get rhythm with them? Well, my comfort level with playing on and off is pretty much the same. I've done it pretty much my whole life, uh, my career. In Indiana, I played off the ball for the most part, so I'm pretty comfortable doing that. And my natural position is a point guard position, so I'm pretty comfortable doing both. And we got great guys, smart guys, so all of us can play on the ball and off the ball. It's just playing the game at the end of the day. And then are there any nuanced differences between playing with Spencer versus playing with Howell? No, they're both great players. They're both smart. They know how to play, make moves defensively. They both play great defense. So it's not hard for me. We just got to communicate and just continue to play and just play the basketball, the game of basketball. Sorry. Cool. Thanks, Aaron. And the last questions are going to come from Christos. Hello, Aaron. Hope you're doing well. How beneficial was players only beating for you as a, as a group and how you see your chemistry so far? Uh, our chemistry has been pretty good. Uh, starting off, obviously, we have a lot of new guys, as I said before. Um, I think chemistry has been been going pretty good, uh, even off the court. We're a great group of guys, a great character. We all get along, and on the court, it's pretty much the same thing. I think it carries over. We all going to play hard for each other, and, and we're not a selfish team. So I think that's the main thing. We just we want to see everybody succeed. And your priorities about uh, the precision games, what, uh, what are your priorities? Just to get better, um, a new team, new coach, everything. So our, my priority for our team is just to get better, stay consistent, and just build the things coach wants us to do. Looking ahead to the beginning of preseason, um, I just asked Dr. Breton, but there's a new ball that these guys have to play with. And, and the way he described it, it sounds like it will be a bit of a factor, at least early on, they got to get adjusted to it. But has there been anything done by the coaching staff to help that process? Uh, not really. I mean, I think just they'll have to get the normal wear and tear. Guys get a feel for it. But, you know, for shooters, it's round. <laughs> Most of them are pretty good at, you know, adapting. Um, for shoot non-shooters like myself, it, it's a big deal. Um, I say that in jest, but, you know, I think, you know, the league has done a great job with the product and um, they've done their research. And so it's, it's something that might take a little bit of adjusting, but, you know, guys will get used to it. And uh, as you look ahead to that first game, just kind of uh... – what are your initial plans in terms of your play? Do you know? Well, I'm going to try and get as many guys in as I can. You know, I think, we, you know, not having as many preseason games as we would in past years, you know, we have to be smart and use those games wisely. But you also want to see what groups work well together. Uh, you want to see your core group play, you know, at some point extended minutes. But you're not going to, you know, run them past 26, 28 minutes. I think is be more than enough. Uh, but you want to have a tune-up ready to go. So you know, we, we'll be ready. October 19th. Wes, uh, other than, I guess, retention, do you look for anything specific coming out of the day off? And, and what did you want to get done today? Well, I think usually on off days, you start a little slow. You, you know, you have to kind of, they need the off day, but you also have to kind of push them, um, you know, blow it out a little bit, do uh, live con uh, segments to keep it competitive, just to kind of keep their focus. Um, and it's just more of a, it, it is a mental component, but it's also, hey, we're going to go after today just to, uh, get off the, get that day off, off our backs, so to speak, and uh, get back into, uh, you know, game conditioning. Um, did everybody go today? Yes. Um, I feel like with last season in particular, with all of the injuries that season, blah, 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 I feel like a lot of teams are going to be pushing around through back and up. It seems like you guys are going pretty hard from what we've been hearing. Is this, is this kind of normal level for you, or are you trying <laughs> No, to I think pretty hard might be a bit aggressive. <laughs> No, I think, you know, I think we have to continue to work smart as far as who we have and, and the compression of the season, the other stressors that we're dealing with. But, you know, at, at this point, we still have, you know, this is camp. So, you know, we're going to do shoot arounds. We're going to go through what we need to go through. And sometimes that's a mental exercise. It's not always, you know, hey, we got to tape it up and get, get after it. No, but just get in the habit of this is how we do things. This is how we work. This is how we prepare. Um, and a lot of that can be done just – you know, mentally, but make that a habit.
pretty much have a pretty good idea who your starting five would be though. But I guess because this is your first time being like a head coach, like are you somebody that likes during the regular season to have a deep bench, you know, condensed, and like how do you prioritize six, seven, and eight? Mm -hmm. Do you like guards? Do you like bigs, or is it just kind of a matchup thing? I think with the preseason, um, especially the first game, I think it's just you want to see certain groups play well together um, in different combinations to see uh, maybe something that you didn't know about. You, know, then you may see a three-man lineup. It's like, wow, that's pretty good. Uh, so I think you have to be creative at times. Um, and once again, you got to get those core guys minutes together to help develop that synergy and chemistry. But it gives you an opportunity to just play with some things, you know, throw some guys out there and see what it looks like. Uh, ideally, you want to get young guys some minutes as well. Because uh, those are minutes you can't simulate in practice. And it's easy to say it's game-like, but it's not. Uh, the, the level of intensity, the emotional component, the nerves, all of that, you know, may play on their abilities, but you want to see how they handle it. We were talking about shot blocking before, and, you know, we haven't seen a shot blocker like Gafford since JaVale. <laughs> and you, interestingly enough, have two different versions of JaVale that you coach. <laughs> yeah. So the JaVale that you coached in Denver, like, what did you see from him that, maybe you could help apply in terms of develop with Daniel going into the second year here? Or just more purpose. I mean, aside from the, you know, normal maturation a player goes through throughout his career, and JaVale's won three, champion, three championships, he's an Olympian. Uh, so, you know, all those other accolades, you know, those experiences matter for, for any player. Um, but just doing everything with purpose. And I think sometimes, you know, you're young, live body, you're just flying around. You, you take yourself out of position unnecessarily at times. Um, just in the name of doing the right thing. And I think as you develop and understand the rhythm of the game, you know, you kind of, all right, I can go get this one. I'll be a little bit more selective about taking yourself out of position. Uh, maybe that helps him on the defensive glass. Uh, but that's just part of just learning the game, uh, understanding personnel, and having the, the game kind of slow down for him. How do you size up a player like Jalen Green, who, uh, I don't know, Who's going to play for Houston? But he's on Houston, and um, next time, you, first time you coach against him, be the first. Right. I mean, it's they, they got a lot of talent, uh, and you know, without getting specific with each individual, I think they're going to challenge us. I mean, they're going to challenge our closeout game, our ability to guard the line, our, our ability to protect our paint, protect the rim. Um, and it's just, you know, a group like that is uh, going to put a lot of pressure on our defense. It's it's going to be a good test for us. How much of your three-page checklist, offense and defense, that you mentioned the other day, how much do you think you've been able to cover over these five days so far? Honestly, not a lot. And I think it goes back to uh, let's get really good at one thing. And I'm not saying we are good at that thing yet, but really put our efforts behind our understanding. Um, let's be clear so that, you know, if there's a mistake, all five guys will know instantly, you know, what that mistake was, who was at fault, and how do we fix it? I think once we get there, now you can start building upon certain things as far as game plans, um, you know, or, or schemes. Right now, it's just, hey, this is what we do. Don't worry about the result because the result doesn't matter. Um, but let's be consistent with this. That's the one thing. Well, I mean, whether, whether that's pick and roll, whether it's just make sure whatever that action is, we understand who's responsible uh, within those confines. All right, Coach, we're going to take a couple questions from Zoom. Uh, we were going to start with Neil. Hey, Coach, how much thought have you given to, you know, you have three pretty good point guards, um, you know, at your disposable. How do you feel about, you know, playing Howell and Aaron either with each other or alongside Spencer? Well, you know, I think it's, it's our opportunity to play with those type of uh, combinations. Uh, you know, I think I want each one of those guys to have an opportunity to run their group to keep us organized. But at the same time, we've done it in practice where we've played those two together. You know, we've played Spencer off the ball. We have put, you know, Brad in a situation where he's the primary ball handler. So it's just, I think it's an opportunity to explore, see what we have. Um, they, those two have responded, those two in particular, and um, they've been really good together. So it's just an interesting dynamic that uh, we'll have to kind of see how that plays out. But it does give us another, uh, you know, opportunity. It gives us more flexibility down the line to see um, what those guys can do. And I'm sure, you know, a rotation is an ever evolving process throughout preseason, throughout the beginning of regular season and the regular season. 
do you feel like you're just going to be fluid with it, you know, as you see it, as you feel what's best? Um, or are you looking to hopefully kind of lock in, you know, a nine man or 10 minute rotation by, you know, the November or something like that? Oh, yeah, I think you have to kind of lock in as, as far as your your groups. Um, and those groups will bleed together because at some point that, you know, you'll play, uh, you'll play different combinations. I think it's also important for them to feel the, you know, when they're coming into the game, who they're, who's going to be on the floor with them and develop that secondary on court chemistry. Um, but I think also, also it's a, it's a field, you know, I think every coach does it. We put together a, a sub chart, but each game takes on a life of its own. And whether it's fouls, whether it's matchups, whether it's just guys not playing well, um, whatever those situations may be, you have to, you know, kind of go with what, uh, go with the flow and make the best decision you can make. Thanks coach. We're going to finish up with Christos. Hello coach. Hope you're doing well. Coach, in those precision games, what are your priorities and what do you expect to see from your players? I think the biggest priority is uh, to see the, the carryover, uh, and particularly the defensive end. It's something that we've harped on. It's not always something we've gotten, to be honest with you. So it's just, this has got to be an emphasis for us. Um, we'll, we'll be able to score with the best of them. We're, we're going to make enough shots. So um, making sure that, that I, they understand that this is a priority. Um, and I think they do. It's just, you know, it's just one of those things that it's got to be a constant reminder. Uh, there, there are no possessions off. That's got to kind of be our mindset that every possession, you know, and, and you could say it's a make or miss league. We got to force those misses. <laughs> and I think if we can force misses, you know, that's going to help our, our offense. So uh, it's not something that we just want to talk about. We have to live it. We got to hold guys accountable. They have to hold each other accountable. Um, it might not translate the first few preseason games. Um, it might feel awkward and uncomfortable because we're not necessarily scheming for the individual players. We're just worried about us. But at the same time, the intensity, you know, uh, the focus, the communication, those things are non-negotiable. We can do that regardless of you know, whether the other team makes shots or not. And also speaking about Spencer and Bradley, their chemistry, how could you describe it? And what did you see so far uh, on and off the floor? I mean, it's tough to say off the floor, but they seem to, to have developed quite the rapport. Um, you know, obviously, they can play well together. They play off each other. Um, I, like, I love the fact that they're interchangeable, that, um, you know, take some pressure off of Brad. Spencer can handle. You can move him around, and, he, you know, it, it does a lot of things for us offensively, and it puts a lot of pressure on defenders because uh, a lot of teams are going to guard them very similarly. So having that flexibility is going to be good for us.